let me guess. You're here because your photos are absolute trash. And you think by editing your photos, they'll be a little less trash. Fair enough. Now, of course, the responsible thing for me to tell you is, if your photos are trash, you should learn how to take better photos instead of trying to manipulate them through software. That's true as well. But if you don't get the time for that, I got you. But let's get to the truth of the matter. Truthfully, you've already tried to edit your photos, probably through Instagram, and then you realized it sucks. The filters are pretty basic, and the manipulation is so simple, and it doesn't give you what you want. You probably try something more robust, like Lightroom or Photoshop, and realize shit was just too complicated. What the hell is a vignette? What the hell is shadows and highlights? And you didn't have no one to teach you. Fair enough. Well, if you want to start learning how to edit photos, you need three things. A smartphone, most of you guys probably have an iPhone, and two apps, Visco and Lightroom. Those are very popular phone editors for photos, and a lot of people are using them. Let's go to the room. Alright, this is the point in the video where you download those two apps that I just mentioned. Visco, VSCO, and Lightroom. They're on both iOS and in Google Play Store. So if you're an Android user or an iPhone user, you can use either. So to start off, I'm going to use Visco, which I think is more user friendly and a little bit more popular than Lightroom in terms of social media use. Lightroom is more for professional use. Now onto the app. Now before we get to the studio, is Visco is similar to Instagram, where it has a feed where users can upload their photos and show their creative juices. This is great because if you're creative, we often experience some type of block. So creative block, writer's block, whatever it is. So if you're in that spot, you could just look at a few photos, see how people edit their photos and gain some inspiration. This is the discover page, similar to Instagram's explore page, so you can find different kind of creators. And then you have your own profile where you can upload, of course, your own photos. But of course, to the studio, I've already uploaded three photos to demonstrate for this tutorial. And this is a mini tutorial, we're not going too in depth. So what you wanna do is you wanna click the photo and then click those two lines with the dots on them to begin editing. Now before showing you the filters, I'll be going over a few of these tools. Exposure. Now exposure is the amount of light that's in the photo that you can manually adjust. So if you move all the way to the right, you can brighten up the image. If you move all the way to the left, you can darken your image. HSL is a very powerful tool. It stands for Hues, Saturation, and Luminance. And what this basically allows you to do is manipulate selective colors or distinctive colors instead of manipulating all of the colors in one image. So for example, the blue sky. For luminance, if I wanted to, I can make this a little bit more luminant. As you can see, it kind of makes it darker. For the hue, I can change the hue as well. And if I wanted to, I could dial it back. So that affects all the blues in the image and it gives us this kind of moody look. It almost looks like an overcast day or a storm is approaching. Then we have the sharpening tool. And the sharpening tool gives you greater details. It highlights edges, um, it accentuates details in the face, textures. So you don't wanna go crazy with the sharpening because then you'll over sharpen the image and it'll begin to look processed. So that's the sharpening tool. Then you have Highlights and shadows, which is a very important photography concept. So highlights are the brightest parts of the image. So as you can see, there's this streak of sunlight that's hitting my girlfriend's face and her body. If I bring down the highlights, it brings down those bright areas and the bright spots of the image. Again, the bright spots of the image. So highlights don't affect the dark spots of the image. That's what shadows are for. So as you can see, I'm right behind the shadows. I'm right at the cutoff point where that streak of sunshine is hitting. So if I wanted to get more details in that dark part of the image, if I wanted to show more of my face or more of my outfit, I could bring up those shadows. But you wanna be careful when you're using the shadow tools because as you can see, if I go all the way up, it crushes the blacks. So if you have a dark outfit on, 
you may want to be careful of how much shadow details you're crushing trying to show more light in the shadows get rid of that then we have our white balance now white balance affects the color temperature of the photo so if you move this to the right you'll see that it has a more warmer tone those oranges those reds are really starting to pop out if you move it to the left you give it a cooler tone so you see those blues and those whites really accentuate themselves I don't really mess with tint I don't play with that saturation is different than HSO saturation affects all the colors in the image so as you can see if I move it to the right it makes all of the colors more vibrant if I move it to the left it makes all of the colors unvibrant <laughs> and then the rest of these are Visco thing so fade if you wanted to you can add a fade to your photos which kind of affects the shadows that's something I like to do grain that's something you can apply to your photos as well I like doing this because it makes it adds texture to the photo it makes it feel vintage so if you're on if you follow me on social media and you looked at my recent post you'll see this grain effect um, really taking place I love that effect and then we have shadows and highlights tint so in the shadows I can make it purple and the highlights I can make it it's like tan color I wouldn't suggest going too crazy with that and of course one of the most important tools is the adjustment adjusting your composition is really important sometimes you might want to get rid of things um, in the picture that you don't want to be there or you may want to straighten your image so um, you can also do that as well all right now that you guys have a better understanding of some of the tools that you can use to edit your photos I'm gonna kind of fast forward and edit one photo and Tell me what you guys think of it in the comments. for a quick minute. I really only use Lightroom to gain greater controls over some of the tools that Visco doesn't have, such as Curves. Curves is a really powerful tool that you can use to adjust your, your highlights, which is on the right side of the curve, and your dark areas or your shadows, which is on the left side of the curves, and your mid-tones, which is in the middle. So I have greater control over adjusting my exposure, and there are other things that Lightroom has that Visco doesn't have such as noise reduction and correcting uh, chromatic aberration. So it's just, for me, more useful for detailed work. So I recommend using Visco first and then using Lightroom to have greater control over things like exposure. All right, now back to what I was saying before. If you're new to my channel, my name is David, but I go by the nickname D Dames and I make videos about barbering and tech. So if you like those things, consider subscribing to my channel. If you like the video, hit the like button, and again, subscribe. Follow me on social media, at ddames. Of course, you'll see all the kind of photos that I edit on my Instagram and my Twitter. 
So if you want some inspiration, follow me there. And I'll be giving you guys the next one soon. This was a little bit different, and I hope you guys liked it. Deuce. Stay blessed.